dear students in this part of the lecture we are going to discuss about the production deduction and uh, analysis of uh, different polarized lights so in the first part we are going to discuss how the elliptically polarized light can be produced let's see for producing the elliptic elliptically polarized light we need to have uh, the optical devices like a polarizer and a quarter wave plate you can consider an unpolarized light can be converted into polarized light with the help of polarizer and the polarizer can be a, a nickel prism and when the plain polarized light is produced by the polarizer it can be used uh, to produce the elliptically polarized light with the help of a quarter wave plate now let's uh, you know understand the process of producing elliptically polarized light through this uh, you know demo you can see this diagram initially the unpolarized light is converted into polarized light with the help of a polarizer that is nothing but a nickel prism you can see this is the polarizer when unpolarized light enter into this uh, polarizer that is a nickel prism it is readily converted into linearly polarized light now this light enters into the quarter wave plate and now we can have an angle as we have discussed in the theory that the angle at this point with the optical axis is other than 45 degree now the incident ray when it enters it split into two components that is e ray and o ray with amplitudes e sin theta and uh, e cos theta at this point so when they travel along the crystal they travel in the same direction with different velocities the two rays are in polarized in orthogonal planes they are in phase with each other at the front face of the quarter wave plate that is at this point so when they uh, proceed inside the crystal due to their difference in velocity they slowly get out of phase when they reach the end phase of this quarter wave plate they will have a phase difference of 90 degree or a path difference of lambda by 4 so these two components that is e ray and o ray when they get out of the quarter wave plate they will have a phase difference of 90 degree or path difference of lambda by 4 and these two components combine to form a plane po i mean a polarized light that is elliptically in nature so when they emerge out of the crystal they will have a path difference of lambda by 4 and uh, a phase difference of 90 degree when they recombine they produce elliptically polarized light now in the next part of the lecture we will see how this elliptically polarized light can be deducted you can see in this diagram we have used a quarter wave plate and an analyzer to check whether the polarized light is of elliptically in nature so to understand <coughs> initially this elliptically polarized light can be allowed to pass through a analyzer analyzer is nothing but a nickel prism now you can see the result the result can be uh, the intensity is going to be uh, varying between a maximum and a minimum value but it is not zero then the incident light can be taken as elliptically polarized so when you use the analyzer to study the elliptically polarized light this elliptically polarized light is allowed to pass through the analyzer and you try to rotate the analyzer then study the intensity the intensity of the emerging beam varies from a maximum to minimum but it is never zero the same result can be you know 
uh, obtained for partially polarized light also. So we need to uh, distinguish between these two cases. That is, one is for elliptically polarized light, and the other one is for, you know, uh, partially polarized light. How to distinguish these two? So let us now uh, pass this elliptically polarized light through a quarter wave plate. Before we pass through the analyzer, we pass the elliptically polarized light through the quarter wave plate. Now what happens? Basically, elliptically polarized light consists of two components, one is ERA and ORE and they are out of phase by 90 degree. If the light passes through the quarter wave plate, an additional phase difference of 90 degrees is introduced between ORE and ERE. Therefore, the total phase di difference becomes 180 degree between ERE and ORE. As a result, on emerging out of this quarter wave plate, the E and ORE is combined to produce plane polarized light. Then, if you try to pass this uh, plane polarized light through the analyzer, the result is going to be uh, at particular point intensity is going to be maximum and it goes for zero. That will confirm the you know incident uh, light is elliptically polarized light. But still if the result is same as the usual, I mean earlier, like the maximum and the minimum you get and no uh, zero is obtained then of course the incident light is a partially polarized light. So we need to distinguish between uh, elliptically polarized light and uh, partially polarized light. So for the case of elliptically polarized light, you are going to have um, maximum and minimum intensity variations, not going to be zero. But in case of partially polarized light, the same results will be obtained. So differentiating uh, these two with the help of quarter wave plate as we have explained. So in this way elliptically polarized light can be detected. In the next part of the lecture we are going to see how uh, the circularly polarized light can be produced. Here also we need to have a quarter wave plate and a polarizer or the optical devices required for producing circularly polarized light from unpolarized light. So in this diagram, you can see unpolarized light is first of all passed through the polarizer and it became a polarized light. Now it is allowed to pass through a quarter wave plate at an angle exactly at 45 degree with the optic axis. So when it is allowed to pass through the optic axis, you can see the plane polarized light incident on the quarter wave plate splits into two rays that is O ray and E ray of equal amplitude E1 that is cos 45 and E2 sin 45 so their uh, amplitude will be equal that is O ray's uh, you know com o ray, that component and E ray that component will have equal amplitude so the two rays travel in the same direction inside the crystal but with different velocities you can see in the you know diagram when the two rays are in phase at the front phase of the crystal but when they proceed inside the crystal, slowly they develop a phase difference of 90 degree and when they get out of the rear phase of the quarter wave plate, their you know, uh, I mean amplitude are equal but they recombine to form you know, a light, we call it as circularly polarized light. Now let's see how uh, the circularly polarized light can be detected. Here also we are going to use a quarter wave plate and an analyzer to study the you know circularly polarized light. So if you allow the circularly polarized light through analyzer directly, of course you will see a result where the intensity is not changing at all. That means you are getting you know for every uh, you know rotation or every turn for every uh, you know different angles you are going to have the same results that is intensity is constant and it is not varying but the same uh, result may be obtained for the unpolarized light also so here we need to uh, differentiate uh, the result between unpolarized light and the circularly polarized light 
So for that what we can do is the circularly polarized light can be first of all allowed to pass through the quarter wave plate then it is allowed to pass through the analyzer. So when it is allowed to pass through the quarter wave plate, what happens? The circularly polarized light is already, you know, consisting of two components, O component and E component, with their, you know, equal amplitudes. Now when they enter into this, uh, you know, optic axis, I mean the quarter wave plate, they develop an additional phase difference of 90 degree. So with that, when they get out of the uh, opposite face of the quarter wave plate, once again they recombine to form plane polarized light. So now, if this uh, plane polarized light is allowed to pass through the analyzer, you will see a result where the when the analyzer is rotated, you will see a result. The intensity goes to a maximum and uh, zero in you know another perpendicular directions so that will conform uh, the light is uh, you know circularly polarized because the circularly polarized light is first of all converted as plain polarized light with the help of quarter wave plate now it is analyzed through the analyzer that is nickel prism that gives the result of you know intensity maximum at some point and at the perpendicular direction right direction uh, the intensity goes zero but if it is still uh, unpolarized light, then even if you rotate, I mean, if you allow the unpolarized light pass through the quarter wave plate, and uh, doing the same, you know, uh, I mean, uh, analysis with the analyzer, the result is going to be same. Like the intensity will not vary. You will still get a constant intensity at a different, you know, angles of rotation of the analyzer. So that will prove the incident light is circularly polarized light. So. In you know another uh, you know uh, class, we will see how these lights can be analyzed.